and welcome to the video. Today I'm going to be servicing this Steger Park 120 ride-on tractor mower. So I've got the service schedule here in terms of what we need to do. Uh, number one, a safety check. Number two, check the tyres, check the air pressure. Uh, need to change the engine oil, check the oil level in the hydraulic transmission. Although on this, this is a service schedule for a different set of Steger mowers actually. I've used it because it's the closest I could find just looking around online. On this one I've checked with this transmission we don't actually need to do anything with the oil, we don't need to change the oil, it's sealed for life, you'd only need to change it if you had to do any maintenance on the transmission. Uh, we need to check all the belts, we need to check the steering's working okay, check the battery, change the air filter or have a look at it and see if it needs changing, clean the cooling fins, change the spark plug and then a whole load of other checks, check the transmission, check the speed, bearing boxes, exhaust, electrical system, mower deck, blades and then a test drive which I've already just done. So I think I'm going to start by taking this cover off and we'll get the oil draining because I've just run the mower just a little bit so the engine's warm so it's a good time to drain the oil. So these cover bolts are a T30 Torx Need to take the fuel filler cap off. Thread this battery conditioner back through. So now we can see what we're doing. Let me show you around. So we're going to do the spark plug later on in there. Fuel filter. Just have a quick look at the condition of these belts while we're here. That fan's got some uh, grass stuck inside it. We could do with removing that. Okay, so I brought you in a bit closer to see the oil change. Obviously, that is where we fill the oil up, and then manufacturers have very kindly given us this tube. You may or may not be able to see me waggling just there. In fact, let's see if we can pull it up just to show you. In the end of the tube is a plug like that, so I'm going to put this tube back, take that clip off, pull the bung out, and then been uh, rifling through the bins and found a couple of suitably sized oil uh, catch containers because my one that I would usually use on a car doesn't fit under there and then we'll drain the oil Expecting about a litre or so. It says that in the manual that the maximum will be 1.2, uh, which is why I've got two containers, which I hope will be sufficient, but we'll soon find out. That's coming out quite nice and slowly. I uh, don't know whether you can tell from the colour of that, but that definitely needed changing. So we'll let that drain and come back when it's done. So while the oil's draining, I've been having a quick look round for any oil leaks, and thankfully I can't see any. I'm going to give this bung a good clean so it's ready to go back. 
The oil for this uh, engine uh, is 10W30. I've bought a semi-synthetic because I think that would be more than sufficient. As I said earlier, maximum of 1.2 litres, but I'll probably put just under a litre in and then see how the dipstick looks at that stage. I'm just going to give it a bit longer to drain. Okay, so next job while the oil's draining is to have a look at the spark plug. It's under here. Let's pull that out of the way. It's a 10 millimeter spark plug wrench. So in terms of colour, that doesn't look too bad. You can see a little bit of wear on there. I'm going to replace this. At the moment it's got a Champion RC12YC. So there's a new plug. Just put a little bit of uh, fresh engine oil on the threads. The gap for this engine, it says between 0.6 and 0.8, which is quite a wide uh, gap range. I'm going to go for 0.7, right in the middle, and happily that is already at 0.7, just put the 0.8 in, yeah that won't go in, so that's 0.7, so that's absolutely fine, so let's put it back in. In terms of how tight to do it, it's probably about a quarter of a turn from when it's seated. Um, I haven't got a torque wrench specification from this, so I'm just using uh, uh, basically a bit of experience to know how tight to do it, but don't do it too tight. And put the HT lead back on. And that's the spark plug done. So next we move on to the air filter. It's under here, got these two plastic clips, which hopefully we can just press in. Looks like one of them is going to be difficult. Okay, I'm just going to go and get some encouragement in the form of a screwdriver. I said screwdriver, I actually decided to go for a blunt chisel instead. That's a bit of a pig. And this hinges back like that, and there is the air filter. So to me, that looks absolutely fine. I really don't think it's worth changing that, so I'm going to put it back. But before I do, Underneath there's a little sponge pre-filter and you see, can see that's got bits of grass and stuff there. So I'm going to give that a blowout with the airline and then I'm going to put it back. So I've blown that with some compressed air but I actually just read the uh, service manual again and it said wash it in some liquid detergent, i.e. washing up liquid. So I'm just going to go and do that, leave it to dry. It's not one that gets oiled before it's put back in, it's just uh, just left dry. So I'm going to give it a clean and then I'll refit it. Okay, so this is all washed and dried now, nice and clean. Well, you can still just about see which way round it goes, which will be helpful. So let's put it back together.
So the oil is pretty much drained now. So I'm going to obviously drop the bung in the oil, that's a good start. Should we do that again? Just about reach it from down there. But then actually I'm going to bring it up to put the clip back on. There we go. This then clips into a recess down under here, which is going to be quite difficult for you to see, but which I'm now going to do. Now we're ready to fill with some more oil. I'm just going to clean round the, uh, the filler neck there because there's loads of bits of grass. Don't really want any of those going in. So that's the oil I'm using, 10W30 as I said. Put just under a litre in there, so I'm going to put the dipstick back in and have a look. And what I just need to go and check is whether you measure the dipstick with the threads out like that or whether you need to screw it back in completely to measure it so let's just go and check that so we need to be checking the engine oil with the dipstick filler cap resting on the top of the threads but not screwed in so just like that incredibly difficult to read That is just at the bottom of the uh, of the hatched area now, after just under a litre. So I'm going to put a bit more in. Get in there. It's about halfway up, and that is at the top. So we're all done. Obviously, I'll check it again after I've started the engine and, and run it for a little while. So the next thing to do is have a look at the battery. I don't know if this is a sealed type, so uh, why I'm saying that is if there's any electrolyte to check, but we'll have a look. Okay, so that battery's all sealed, so we haven't got any electrolyte to check. I've just noticed that terminal's loose, though. Nice and tight. Right, these terminals, I think they're going to be 8mm, so we'll just tighten them up. Be careful when you're on the positive, when the negative is still connected, because if your spanner touches something while it's touching the positive, you won't get a spark. Okay, I'll do the other one while we're at it. Yeah, that one was a bit loose as well. Okay, let's have a look at the voltage. This is uh, kept on a on a battery conditioner, so it should be all right. But let's just check. So yeah, 13.01, that's pretty good. What I'm going to try and do now is start it up and just check it's charging. Quite a challenge to video that because I've got to be sitting on the seat, otherwise it will stop the engine. It's got an automatic uh, interlock there that will stop the engine. So what I might do is connect these up. Leave that somewhere you can see it, which isn't there. 
you can see that there, 13.01, yes you can, okay, let's see what happens, we all back together, yes. So that looked like it was charging just fine. You couldn't uh, obviously hear what I was saying because the engine was running, but what I was looking for was that the voltage increased above the battery voltage when it wasn't running when, when we started it up and had it, had it running. And hopefully you could see that that was indeed happening. Okay, so what I'm doing now is just having a look at the belt, checking the belt tension. Checking they're not frayed, that one looks really good. And then there's another long belt underneath which takes the drive to the cutters. Again, that one also looks fine to me. The tension seems reasonable. So, the next thing to do is to check the steering cables. You can see there they are just there, just feel the tension in them. They've both got a good amount of tension in. Turn the steering from lock to lock, check things like this pulley mounting is secure, which it is. The cables go round and that's where you'd adjust the tension. Obviously there's another one on the other side. It all seems to operate absolutely fine. At the front there's a chain. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. There you go, so at the front there's a chain which I suspect will need a little bit of lubrication so I'm just going to do that now. Last thing to do before I put the engine cover back on is just to use some uh, compressed air to blow out all this uh, dry grass that's got stuck around. Have a check of the exhaust while well here, that looks fine. Everything's secure. Check there's no fuel leaks, which there aren't. Taking the grass out of that cooling fan. So I've just flipped the cutting deck up so I can have a look at the cutters underneath. Check. They're all intact, no huge gouges out of the blades or anything. It's quite a nice system on this. Now, the owner of this one has fitted this extension onto the pedal to lift the deck up, which does make it slightly more difficult to, to flip the deck into this position. So to flip the deck, obviously it's in the flipped position now. When it's down, you need to pull this out with it in the raised position, pull that out and you can see, hopefully you can see, there's two holes that that pin goes into. That's the one it goes in when the deck's in the normal position for cutting and then that's the position it goes in to hold itself in this raised up position. You'll notice I've also put the front of the mower on some blocks, just lifted it up by hand on, on these uh, it's just to enable me to get a bit more um, clearance underneath to have a look at it and grease the steering chain and that sort of thing. You can see that, that gap there has opened up substantially so there's a lot more space for me to get underneath and clean all the cables and grease the, uh, the control cables. So there's a fair old amount of grass stuck in all of this. So what I'm going to do now is scrape it all off. Let's have a look at the blades. They actually look alright. minor nicks in them but not too bad at all okay so as I say this deck needs a good old clean underneath and then we'll put it back down and move on 
So you can see you've got a good old pile of grass out of the cutting deck. Not cleaned it completely, but it's a lot cleaner than it was. It's also opened up that gap in there so I can get to the parking brake cable and the uh, forward reverse cable. And also put some grease on the steering chain, as I mentioned before. So now we'll just lower the deck. So I got back, was just putting this video together and realised there was something I haven't shown you which was checking the belts under here. So let's do that now. Use a 13mm. I didn't expect there to be any problems with these but nonetheless you don't want to go around assuming stuff like that because you can end up looking a bit of an idiot if there is a problem but that looks really good there's no grease or oil on nice and tight no perishing They both feel secure. So, all good. Just get some grease for those bolts and we'll put them back together. So, it slides in to the bolts at the back with these little tabs there. little dab of copper grease. It looks like the bottom of these bolts might actually go through to the deck below so they get covered in wet grass and the like so no wonder they've started to rust. Okay, so that's us pretty much done with the service of this Steger Park 120 ride-on mower. Uh, just a few more things to check, the safety checks that I talked about earlier on in the video. So I've got a list of them on my phone here, just to remind myself. So, um, checking that the blades can't spin when the deck is raised. I'm not going to actually do these because the noise of the engine will mean you won't be able to hear what I'm saying. Checking the blades don't spin when the deck's raised. Checking the engine cuts out when you're not sitting on the seat. Checking that the engine won't start unless the parking brake is on. And if you've got a, a manual uh, blade drive mechanism, this one's actually electric. If you've got a manual one, making sure that you can't start the engine when the blade drive is engaged. That's not applicable to this one, but I mention it just in case you've got a slightly different model. That's about it. I hope it's been useful. Head over to the website for more information. There's going to be a blog post uh, going along with this video which will go through some of the information covered in a bit more detail. Thanks very much for watching.